Hello, everybody. The theme for this week's story time and our activities is going to be all about the ocean. And the ocean is so big and so cool, and there's so many fun facts I want to share with you about the ocean. But this book that we're going to read does a really great job of covering some of those neat facts. So we're going to just dive right into our book this week, um, and maybe we'll talk about some extra things at the end. This book is called The Ocean in Your Bathtub. What do you think? When you fill up your bathtub, is it with the ocean? Why would a book be called this? And it says, find the ocean wherever you are. It was written by Seth Fishman and illustrated by Isabel Greenberg. Ocean in your bathtub. Would you do me a favor? Check to see if there's any salt water beneath you. I don't see any. Do you see any? There's not? Hmm, that's strange. Because the oceans are everywhere. It's true. Five oceans cover 71% of our planet and contain 97% of our water. That's almost all of our water. Almost four out of every 10 humans live within 60 miles of one of those oceans. So we have the Arctic Ocean up at the top of the world, the Atlantic Ocean on our East Coast, the Pacific Ocean on our West Coast, the Southern Ocean down near Antarctica, and the Indian Ocean over by India and the East part of Africa. Even if you don't live near a beach, and instead you live in a skyscraper, or on a farm, or in the mountains, or on a river, the oceans still play an enormous role in your everyday life. Now go take a look out the nearest window. Do you see a cloud in the sky? Ooh, I see some up above me. That cloud most likely is loaded with water vapor straight from the ocean. Seawater evaporated into the air and formed a cloud. So when the surface water gets heated up by the sun, it gets so hot that it turns into a gas and we call that evaporation. So it goes up and it forms a cloud. Now it's drifting over you. We call this condensation when water droplets form inside the cloud. Eventually, it will pour down as rain, and lots of that rain will trickle back to the ocean to form a new cloud. We call this the water cycle. Some water doesn't return directly to the ocean. It rains or snows down to fill our reservoirs and lakes and rivers. Those, along with underground aquifers, are major sources of drinking water. And it says down here, the ocean is not a major source of drinking water. It's way too salty. So we call our rivers and our lakes, our ponds, things that aren't salty, we call that fresh water. So only 3% of the water on earth is fresh water or not salty. So that means we can only drink 3% of the water. Every plant, tree, and blade of grass is fed by falling water. All of our fruits, grains, and vegetables need water to grow just like we do, and they make up a large part of the food we eat every day. Yep, the ocean is hiding in your afternoon snack. So without the ocean, you wouldn't be able to have those delicious snacks. I just had lunch and I had a banana in my lunch. Thank you, ocean. In fact, those crops are only one part of the bounty of the sea. About 3 billion people rely on seafood to survive. Hmm. Look at all those different foods. Do you see anything on this page that you like eating? Maybe some sushi? Ooh, shrimp cocktail? Fish sticks? Crab? Maybe a fish fillet with fries? Fish and chips, we call that? Fish sandwich? Mmm. The ocean doesn't just provide thunderstorms and drinking water and food for life on land. 
we actually breathe because of it too. Even if you are too far from the ocean to smell the salt, almost seven out of every 10 gulps of air you take contain oxygen that comes from plant life in the ocean. So just like our plants on land make air for us to breathe, the plants in the ocean make air for us to breathe too. A forest of trillions and trillions of tiny plants floats in and on the sea, taking in sunlight and ex exhaling oxygen. They are like the big breathing lungs of the ocean. It says never try to breathe while you're in the ocean, unless you're wearing scuba or snorkeling gear. Of course, humans aren't the only creatures relying on the oceans. Bears, birds, and numerous other animals rely on fish and seafood for their daily diet. Plants do too. You can actually watch on explore.com, or maybe it's explore.org right now, the grizzly bears of the Pacific Northwest, they have cams where they're feeding on salmon in the river, so you can watch it live, and that's pretty cool. Soil along the rivers that empty into oceans is fertilized by fish that swim upriver. That's not even counting the potentially many, more than one million species that live in the ocean. The oceans are full of life and wonder. So it talks about some of the things going on in the ocean. Sand is formed by rock being smashed over and over again by waves, water, and weather for millions of years. Some of the white sand beaches of Hawaii are made from the poop of parrotfish. Whoa. Volcanoes and shifting plates on Earth, called tectonic plates, can form new islands and mountain ranges. More people have stepped on the moon than visited the bottom of the Marianas Trench at around 36,000 feet below the ocean surface. So that's the deepest part of the ocean. So more people have been to the moon than the deepest part of the ocean. The sperm whale's rib cage and lungs deflate, allowing it to hunt for giant squid in dark depths of 7,000 feet or more. Sunlight has a hard time traveling more than 650 feet into the ocean. The Great Barrier Reef is so large, it can be seen from space. And just as the oceans affect everyone everywhere, everything we do affects the oceans. The baths we take, the toilets we flush, the garbage we toss, the balloons we let slip from our fingers. A lot of our waste eventually ends up in the ocean. For a long time, nobody thought about how much stuff we put in the oceans or how many fish and other marine life we took out. Sometimes it takes a while to learn from your mistakes, right? So now's our chance, because even the smallest action can do some good. Looks like down here, it might be hard to tell, but it looks like they're trying to rebuild coral reefs which a lot of um, different conservation organizations are trying to do that right now. That good deed of yours can have a great effect. If everyone does something small to help our oceans, those deeds will ripple outward the same way that streams fit into creeks and brooks and rivers and lakes, all of which eventually flow into the ocean. This ocean of good deeds surrounds us all, bringing everyone and everything together. Even you, no matter where you are. So don't worry if you're not visiting the beach anytime soon. The ocean's bound to visit you anyway. So then the author has some more information at the end. One thing I didn't mention was find it again. Some of the plants they were referring to in the ocean, should have pointed this out, there are tiny, tiny, tiny plants that are so small in the ocean that we can't even see them, which is why they're showing it with this microscope. They're called phytoplankton, and they play a super duper important role, not only for making oxygen for us to breed, but they're the base of the food chain for a lot of other animals in the ocean. 
So it, it gets, give us a bunch of information on phytoplankton. I won't read through it all. And then I'm going to read the your part, though. It says, the oceans are just begging for someone like you to learn more about them. That means playing on their shores and swimming their depths, exploring aquariums, and studying marine life. Climate change is affecting and will continue to affect the oceans as we know them. Temperatures are warming, waters are rising, and sea life is shifting. We need people like you to learn and understand and change with it. Right now, the oceans are protecting you, no matter where you are. So let's return the favor. All right, so that was our book, The Ocean in Your Bathtub. And it talked about how you can help the ocean, but it didn't give us any very specific examples. So I want you at home with your friends, with your family, with your parents, with your neighbors, whoever it is at home, I want you to kind of brainstorm some ways that you think you could help the ocean. It might be reducing the amount of plastic that you use, not using plastic shopping bags, because those can look like jellyfish and harm our sea turtles, or plastic straws that animals eat, bottle caps, all those things are, are harmful to our sea life. Um, but it might be something else. Maybe it has to do with water pollution, or maybe it has to do with buying a different type of fish at home that comes from a sustainable way we harvest fish from the ocean. So talk to your families about ideas that you guys have of ways that we can help the ocean. Because we learned from this book, the ocean does a lot for us. So we need to do something for the ocean. So I hope you guys have a great week learning about the ocean, talking about the ocean. Do more research on the ocean on your own. There's so much to learn about the ocean and so many crazy plants and animals that live in the ocean. It's so much fun to learn about. Let us know if you find out anything cool. Let us know if you're doing any of the activities in our Daily Activities Facebook group. And we will see you next week for another story.